What you do in life chooses you. You can choose not to do it. You can choose to try to do something safer. Your vocation chooses you. When I really started painting a lot, I had become so obsessed that there was nowhere to move in my home. Paintings were everywhere. They were becoming a part of the furniture. I was eating on them. I found myself looking around at one point in a really bleak winter in New York, and it was just so depressing. And I think I needed color. It's getting kind of pedestrian to me now, the teal. You know what I'd like to do is just start threading in some purple, you know, into these things. Uh, I'll find the ultimate color and I'll be able to reproduce it. You can tell what I love by the color of the paintings. You can tell my inner life by the darkness in some of them. And you can tell what I want from the brightness in some of them. 5 a.m. So I'm making a little more progress now. It's really kind of cool what happens with these things, you know, because you really don't know what a sculpture or a painting totally means. You think you do. Most of the time I start out with a plan, and then, you know, like a year later, I'll realize that the painting was telling me what I needed to know about myself a year before. I think what makes someone an artist is they make models of their inner life. They make something physically come into being that is inspired by their emotions or their needs or what they feel the audience needs. I like the independence of it. I love the freedom of it. No one else tells you what you can or can't do most of the time. Uh, and there's an immediacy to it. Art has to be service, you know? It's like you're servicing your subconscious, and at the same time, you're, you're doing something that someone's gonna relate to, hopefully. When I was a kid, I spent half my time in the living room performing for people. I spent the other half the time in my bedroom by myself writing poetry and sketching. I was not the type of kid you could say, as a punishment, go to your room, because my room was heaven to me. My isolation was welcome. People that are different have a shot at being original. You know, they got motivation yeah. too. You know, they got motivation. I sketched all the time, but I didn't do a lot of painting. Suddenly, six years ago, at a time when I was trying to heal a broken heart, I decided, well, maybe I'll paint. When your heart is in love, you're floating, weightless. But when you lose that love, you have to re-enter the atmosphere. And it can get pretty rough. You're just bouncing off one molecule and onto the next, ripping through them at such a pace that they just ignite and explode until you find another heart that's doing the same thing, has landed and cooled, and then you start to float again. The energy that surrounds Jesus is electric. I don't know if Jesus is real, I don't know if he lived, I don't know what he means, but the paintings of Jesus are really my desire to convey Christ consciousness. I wanted you to have the feeling when you looked in his eyes that he was accepting of who you are. I wanted him to be able to stare at you and heal you from the painting. You can find every race in the face of Jesus. and. I think that's how every race imagines Jesus. They imagine him as their own. That's pretty. It's so funny, I get so stuck when I'm trying to choose colors, but I want to just grab them, it's cool. 
I don't know what painting teaches me. I, I know that it just frees me. Free from the future, free from the past, free from regret, free from worry. Something inside you is always telling a story. I believe every single thing that you see and hear is talking to you. You know, the bottom line with all of this, whether it's performance or it's art or it's sculpture, is love. We want to show ourselves and have that be accepted. I love being alive and the art is the evidence of that. Mm -hmm.